On paper, the Mercury Star Runner is a true jack of all trades, offering combat performance, speed, cargo or vehicle storage, plus sitting in that sweet spot of offering both solo and small group play. But whilst many Star Citizen ships remain on paper, the Mercury Star Runner is available in game, which prompts the question, how does the ship actually perform? I'm Forrester, and in this video we'll explore the answer to that question by reviewing the currently flyable Crusader Industries Mercury Star Runner, which is described as a medium cargo slash medium data ship. If you've seen other reviews on this channel then you probably know what to expect, with this video following the usual format. It's split into five sections, starting with a ship tour, assessing combat performance, reviewing handling and visibility, looking at the operating costs before finally summarising. As always, I've included timestamps in the video description in case you want to skip ahead. And if you're one of the many people watching who isn't yet subscribed to the channel, you might consider it so you can be notified of future Star Citizen videos as they go live. And approaching the Mercury Star Runner from the back, the ramp access is via a button on the left or port side of the ship. This deploys the rear ramp and takes you up into the rear cargo bay of the Mercury Star Runner. Clearly this is a huge space to be able to store various pieces of cargo, but also small vehicles like the Dragonfly pictured here. There's a control on the inside as well to be able to open and close the door. Off to the rear left or port side of the ship is the engineering section. Here you'll find various component bins that house the various parts of the ship. There's also access to the internal crawlways via a hidden panel on the right hand side. Opening this up opens up access to the button which lets you into the crawlways itself. These small areas run through the length of the Mercury Star Runner and have little pop-up sections from here and there that allow you to go into the upper deck. It can get a little confusing but if you look carefully there is some writing on some of these hatches that tells you what you're popping up into. We'll make our way back to the cargo deck, however we'll make our way to the starboard side. This offers the so called secret storage area of the Mercury Star Runner. Thank you. The panel comes away giving you access to the rear cargo bay, and if you're looking to access it from the inside, this is the little panel that opens up that lets you do so. We'll now head to the forward and upper deck of the Mercury Star Runner. There is a lift that takes you up. Alternatively, if you're in a rush, you can just use the ladder. We first enter what is called the server room. Here you can see blade servers of lots of different types. In future, this may offer some sort of data running gameplay. On the right or starboard side is access to the two manned turrets. And then on the left or port side is access to the scanning room, which has its own scanning station. As we move forward through the ship you can see here an example of access to those lower crawlways and what that looks like from the deck above. Moving forward we enter into a cross section which gives access to the habitation and recreation rooms. Habitation is the sleeping area of the Mercury Star Runner. There are a couple of desks as well as beds for three of the crew. This is also where you find the shower and toilet facilities on the MSR. There are also these racks for storing goodies. As we leave habitation we'll move to the recreation area. Thank you. 
This is one of the areas in the Mercury Star Runner that will really capture the imagination of many. There are light controls on the wall and a chessboard in the centre. Many players will know if you grab the right chess piece from the chessboard and place it in a certain place at the bar, the chessboard itself will open up and give you another secret access to the crawlway below. As we move towards the bridge on the front of the ship, past weapons rack, we'll see there's an additional corridor. And then we enter into the co-pilot pilot combination cockpit. There's another weapons rack on the right or starboard side of the ship. The pilot and co-pilot chairs deploy forward as you get into them. As a fairly equitable combat platform, there are positions for up to three players to fire two Panther repeaters each, two by the pilot on a gimbal below the nose, two in a manned turret at the top of the ship, and two in a manned turret at the bottom of the ship. These weapons can be swapped out for other size 3 instead. In terms of missiles, the stock loadout is two size 3 and four size 2, although these can be swapped out for any combination of 16 size 1 up to 4 size 3. And defensively, the MSR has two size 2 shield generators, which puts it on a par with some of the heavy fighters in game. Altogether, that's a fair armament for a ship that isn't solely designed around combat. There are stronger options out there, but the Mercury Star Runner can hold its own, especially against smaller targets. The turret angles give reasonable coverage, and with precise piloting, it's possible to converge all of the weapons on one target at the front. As a solo ship, the dual size 3 up front is enough to whittle down some smaller targets, but may take a little longer against beefier opponents. It's worth adding that the twin shield generators offer reasonable protection, but after a minute or so in the fight, expect them to need recharging, which means the MSR is more tailored to shorter engagements. Thankfully, the excellent top speed means it's possible to extend away and disengage if you need to. In terms of visibility, the Mercury Star Runner offers the pilot a good view out to the sides and above. Although there is some cockpit glass by the pilot's feet, the natural obstructions of having flight controls means it's more used for sighting the ground rather than as a detailed viewport. But the cockpit is located right at the front of the ship, which does make things easier. The handling feels somewhere between a heavy fighter and a small multi-crew ship. Which is to say, for a ship of this size, which does what the MSR does, it's fairly impressive. In atmosphere, the turn rate can feel a little more sluggish, but with generous application of the afterburners, is not insurmountable. In fact, the Mercury Star Runner is quite forgiving, including for less experienced pilots. And with a substantial top speed of 1,287 meters per second, the Mercury Star Runner is one of the fastest ships in the game in a straight line. That's great for outrunning opponents if you need to. The stock quantum drive is a Bolon, which is fairly rubbish. I'd swap it out for any of the military grade drives, but the quantum fuel stores on the MSR are generous, meaning even with a mil spec drive, you're easily able to cross the whole Stanton system without having to worry about a refuel. The Mercury Star Runner is nudging into the medium ship bracket, meaning if you really push it hard, the costs to refuel, rearm and repair will start to add up. Usually these will be into the thousands, or maybe into low five figures if you've really gone for it. But the true strength of the MSR is the utility it offers in lots of different options to make back that money. The first place to shine a light on is the expansive cargo bay at the back, with 114 units of cargo storage. That's enough to start making some profits through cargo trading, and because it's so easy to fly both in and out of atmosphere, have a good time doing so. Moreover, that cargo bay can also be used for small vehicles, like the Rock Mining Rover, and once again, the ship being easy to fly and having the ramp at the back makes the MSR a natural choice to throw one or two rovers in the back. 
And finally, the Mercury Star Runner is capable of holding its own in combat situations, meaning combat contracts become possible. Remembering that the shields don't like being in a fight for too long, and that to unlock the full combat potential you'll want a couple of gunners, still, the MSR can make money through combat contracts. In terms of loadout changes, the only thing I'd swap out from stock would be the Quantum Drive, to put in a crossfield or similar. The rest of the stock gear actually seems to hold up fairly well, although if you're really min-maxing, you might want to throw some upgrades here and there. For many players, myself included, the aesthetics of the Mercury Star Runner will really warm you up. The black and white motif and the asymmetrical profile look great from the outside, and inside the Crusader Industries style makes the space feel functional, but also somehow homely. In fact, the interior of the ship reminds me a lot of the Endar Spire, for those who get that reference, albeit that was a much bigger ship. The inclusion of servers and the potential for future data running, whatever that looks like, also gives the possibility of an interesting niche for the MSR in the future, similarly to the Herald. The scanning station kind of works, although I'm not sure why many players would use it at the moment. But the options for a crew of three are shaping up nicely. In peacetimes, a pilot, co-pilot and scanner position potentially give three players something to do, or at least somewhere to sit. And during combat, the co-pilot and scanner operator could move to the two gun turrets, giving everybody a role. And the inclusion of beds for all three players is a plus two. 114 SCU of cargo storage means that the MSR falls short of being a true cargo hauler, but equally, it's enough to be able to do some basic running, and the ramp at the back means it's a fantastic place for throwing vehicles. The so-called secret storage off to the side sounds great, and is very in keeping with the custom YT-1300 theme, but ultimately, any little secret area that comes as standard in every model isn't really secret at all. Shielded? Maybe. But the immersion guy in me would rather see the opportunity to customise different secret spaces for your own ship. Maybe in one of the component bins? Nevertheless, it seems a little gimmicky, as do the crawlways beneath the ship. They are really fun to walk around the first time you get aboard and pop up like a little whack-a-mole to give your friends a laugh, but 9 times out of 10 when you're flying the Mercury Star Runner as a daily driver, you're unlikely to use them. And speaking of daily driver, MSR pilots will possibly agree with me that the walk from the exit at the back of the ship all the way to the cockpit at the front does get old fast. All of that said, the Mercury Star Runner is easy to fly. It's a nice size of ship, not being too big and not too small. It's in that perfect zone for multi-crew, where it's easy to solo, but just as easy to have up to three players aboard, all with things to do. It's multi-use, has great utility, offering fair combat performance, fair trading performance, and the ability to haul a rock or two for hand mining with plenty of internal storage space to boot. But with an in-game price of almost 5 million Alpha UEC, the Mercury Star on it is expensive. For context, that's the same price as the Hercules, which offers more performance in most areas, albeit for a larger ship. And the out-of-game price at $230 to $260 is a little steep compared to another competitor, the Constellation Taurus. In fact, the Taurus is a big competitor to the MSR, also offering decent pilot weapons, a turret gunner position, the ability to load a vehicle, and more storage at 174 SU compared to the 114 on the MSR. Ultimately, a lot of that decision may come down to aesthetics, speed, and ease of flying the MSR, all of which are great reasons that some players may consider it. So, in summary, I guess the verdict is, somebody playing with their head might opt instead for the Constellation Taurus or the Hercules, but somebody who wants a ship that can walk the walk, as well as making a statement whilst doing so, well, maybe the Mercury Star Runner is for you. But do you agree? I'll be interested to read your thoughts in the comments, especially if you own a Mercury Star Runner, as this is a ship that really captures the heart. Once again, if you're not yet subscribed, you really might consider it if you got this far, as I have a few more Star Citizen ship reviews you can expect over the coming months. And it'll also be really helpful if you press that like or dislike button to guide me as to what videos you're enjoying the most so I can tailor them to you. 
otherwise, and as always, thank you for watching. This fight is too much for us. We better stay back. All we do is get in the way. Thank <laughs> you.